let's be clear about this. When the government bails out anything, it doesn't go and collect more tax. It doesn't go and, and raise the revenue from taxpayers. What it does is it diverts existing revenue from other purposes, other budgets, other functions. Now, we can't say from what the bailouts are diverted, but what we, because it's, it's, uh, it's amorphous, it just comes out of the Treasury, so the Treasury spends less on other stuff. And probably the best way to get a handle on at what expense this occurs is simply the proportions of the budget allocations, is what, what does government spending go to on balance. Most of it is for the poor, so we must understand that government spending is for the lower and middle income groups largely, especially the lower income groups, both in rhetoric and in reality. This is what it says it's there to do and what it in fact allocates the money to largely. So we must regard every single bailout as coming at the expense of the poor getting services, housing, policing, education, healthcare services and so on. That is who pays for the bailouts. In 1990, and before we go further, this was of course pre-transition, and you will see in a moment that this policy was re-adopted and, and reconfirmed, so it is not changed since 1990. And for what it's worth, this is a constitutional law point, section 195 of the Constitution, policy may not be changed other than in accordance with section 195 of the Constitution. In other words, this is binding. The government may not do something other than the policy. It's not allowed to. It's unconstitutional not to implement policy. So this is the policy then. Um, it was, it must, SA Airways must operate autonomously and on a commercial basis. Quote. So these are quotes. These are not uh, adaptations. It will not enjoy any privileges as a result of being a government enterprise. Um, Government will in future not guarantee, we've just had a five billion guarantee, now my view is that guarantee is unconstitutional because it's in breach of a binding government policy. Not guarantee new loans to SA Airways or any other airline with government interests while private airlines have to borrow at their own risk. That's unambiguous. You can't get more blunt than that. And I don't know how anybody could say that the bailouts and the backing implicit and explicit are lawful. It seems to me that they're clearly unlawful. 